Hey guys, Joel here, Precision Rifle Network. Today, the new Zeiss LRP S5 3-18x50. So I picked up one of these scopes um, just a couple of weeks ago and I thought, you know, I, this looks really interesting. The glass is very good. I'm going to compare it right off the bat to uh, the glass quality of the Zero Compromise Optics. It's not quite there. It's not quite to the Zico level, but Zico is something that I know quite a bit about and so I can compare easily and give you guys kind of an idea of, of how good it is. So. Um, zero compromise optics like light transmission through the scope to the eye is at like 93%. The stated measurement on this one is 90%. To the untrained eye, I'm not trying to make myself sound better, it's just that as a photographer I'm used to dealing with how different types of really good glass appear um, to the human eye and so to the untrained eye you wouldn't know the difference between this glass here and the brightness and clarity of a zero compromise. Now where you're gonna start seeing a little bit of difference um, between a, a zero comp and this Zeiss is in the contrast and the clarity in the shadows. It's that resolution of fine detail. Now those tests are done at 100 yards with a certain type of, of target that you can actually measure the difference. Now I'm not doing that here today, but I can tell you this is very good. So um, the glass being out of the way, because that's typically what people ask is, well, how good's the glass compared to XYZ? Well, there's just so many factors that go into that, but let's put that behind us. The glass is very, very good. Okay, so let's talk about just some of the features. Um, if you are used to your magnification ring, going clockwise to increase the magnification like many many scopes do you're going to be disappointed that this one goes counterclockwise to increase the magnification range um, some of those guys that don't quite understand parallax and think that those numbers on the parallax knob uh, matter and if you're at 300 yards you should set that number to 300 yards and then it's good that's not the way parallax works um, you'll be disappointed that there are no numbers on your parallax knob. But if you understand about parallax and getting everything on the same focal plane, that adjustment will just make sense to you. And it's, it's very, it's firm, but not too firm. Um, it's smooth, but not loose, as far as the feel of that is concerned. So that's very nice. I will, since I'm here on this turret already, cover the illuminated reticle. It's like, it's daylight bright. So if you think about a red dot on an AR and it needs to be true daylight bright, so it needs to get super bright to be able to, to compete with the sun, um, this illuminated reticle does that. It's, it's exceptionally bright. And it's kind of a neat feature because there's no clicks, you know, like one to 10 or whatever, and it's locking. So you pull this out, which turns it on, and then you've just got a dial that you can, it just infinitely spins, but it'll infinitely spin all the way up to full brightness, and then it'll infinitely spin all the way down to the dimmest setting, which um, it would be appropriate for use with night vision. It goes extremely low, so really cool. And then when you push the knob back in, it shuts it off. So I kind of like that, and it's locking, uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Speaking of locking, the windage turret, has a lock on it, so you have to pull out and adjust your windage and then push back in to lock it. Elevation has uh, no lock, 
but that's okay to me I have never I've never accidentally bumped my elevation turret coming in and out of barricades or in a hunting situation or anything like that I have accidentally bumped and adjusted my windage knob so I like having either a covered windage or a locking one I have personally started to dial on my wind if it's a consistent wind and so I like the fact that I can pull it out adjust it lock it and I don't have to worry about it so and the the, the turret feel is very it's very audible it's tactile there's actually if you picture inside the turret um, you know the ridges or, or the cutouts or whatever that create that kind of clicking feel I, now I don't know about the internals on this one but at every full mill the ridge or the little cutout or whatever it is in there the detent or whatever is just slightly bigger so at every full mill it almost like hangs up and it's not a bad thing because you know when you're trying to do it quickly you can you can not look at it and you can just count each of those because you can feel it um, you can feel it go past those full mill uh, rotations or um, clicks so that's kind of nice um, the lines line up perfectly um, field of view I've had no issues with not field of view eye relief the eye relief to me after I set the scope up to myself perfectly it's it's perfect I don't have to worry about it like my face goes on the gun my picture is there I have no issues with it so I'm not really sure where that came from with some folks I would just maybe pitch that back to them and say make sure it's set up correctly because it seems fine to me um, so I really like that uh, the reticle inside your standard kind of PRS style Christmas tree you know two tenths uh, hash marks floating center dot which I do like um, although for my old eyes anyway I have to run it pretty much on 18 times all the time if I'm gonna be able to see that that center dot that floating dot if I turn it down to say to say 10 um, it's still a usable reticle like I can still see the crosshairs but I cannot I cannot you know differentiate between um, you know click lines and that center dot at all is too small for me to be able to see so if you've got a little bit older eyes take that into account um, but guys it's really good um, another thing that people have questioned is the zero stop feature in here now read the instructions it's super clear as to how you're supposed to adjust this thing um, and it is different it's it's a lot different in fact than than some basically what you do is you you know you figure out your zero let's say your zero happened to be up seven mils right and you had to readjust your scope and, and turn your turrets back to zero to, to, to reset your zero stop but what you do is you actually the instructions say this clearly you take these two torque screws and you back them out one full rotation only one rotation that's it and you can feel this thing loosen up as soon as you do one full rotation on each of those and then you actually press down on the turret and then you turn clockwise until you go all the way back down to the the hard zero stop and what's confusing to some people is that while you're turning that after you've loosened these up you actually feel some tactile clicks as it's going around so you're like oh crap I'm certain that I'm dialing clicks onto the scope at this time but you're not um, it's completely disengaged even though you can feel some clicks you go all the way down to your zero and then while still pressing down and holding it at your zero you retighten those screws um, you know there's a, a torque a torque value that they want you to use but you know just just uh, barely snug on there and you're good to go I had no issues with it whatsoever and then you know I proceeded to go uh, I went 300 400 500 600 and 700 yards and came back in and my return to zero was excellent I also did a box test um, to just make sure that tracking value was correct the tracking value was perfect um, I have not done a tall target tracking test on it yet um, I just forgot to bring this stuff with me today but guys overall um, shoot the Zeiss uh, LRPS5 uh, is good to go in my opinion I think it's I think it's 
it's it's probably in that thirty four hundred dollar range. If you could see these down under three thousand, I think that would be perfect. I'm not sure currently what major retailers are are selling them for. I imagine as this year goes on, you should see that price come down and get a little bit more competitive. Um, Dealers, from my understanding, have a little bit more wiggle room on this. Uh, sorry, dealers, I probably just gave away some secrets, but um, I would expect this to 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 come down and be a little bit more competitive. Um, you know, seven, eight hundred dollars cheaper than say a zero compromise, and I think this belongs in that upper two thousands to three thousand dollar range. I think it's I think it's great. The features are excellent, and um, it is lighter weight. Uh, by a little bit. I will tell you that. I, I don't remember the exact ounces, but it's 10 ounces lighter weight than a Zero Comp 4 to 20. Uh, so maybe if you're looking for super good, high quality glass in that 3 to 18 range for, let's say, NRL Hunter, it might be perfect for that. So um, that's my initial assessment, my initial review of the of the Zeiss uh, LRPS5, guys. I think it's I think it's good to go so far. So I'm going to continue to use it. I'll bring you some follow-up stuff with it, but um, I, th I dig it. I think it's pretty sweet. So, guys, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for more great videos from Precision Rifle Network.